All right, video em editing on Linux part two. Uh, assuming we were here for part one somewhere, that's all right. We're going to cover the part one essentials, which is pretty much just one uh, command, and that's that'll massage any of your videos into the format that works well in OpenShot and many other editors. The major problem if you if you go and try to use these other editors is like if you put a H.264 video in there, they don't like it. It's a codec problem. It, it'll crash or you won't be able to scrub back and forth very well. Um, so I always put it into this one format that works well. And there it is. It's a MP4 container, MPEG-4 video, and uh, FAC audio. And it seems to work really well. And you can put that on pretty much anything, even Windows, without a lot of trouble and it'll run that video. Alright, so there are a lot of editors out there. I spent a lot of time trying them, hoping I could find one that worked. I used the iMovie for quite a while, and it's, it's hard to beat. It's still not quite up to iMovie's ease of use, but they're pretty close now. Um, so I thought I'd go over these and give you my opinion on them. Kino is an older editor. It was great for Firewire. It did uh, standard def movies really well. It had, had title features, it had credits, it had all this good stuff you can make videos with it. It's very stable. Um, but it, did not, it does not do high def, so now it's, it's sort of you know, getting useless for that. Uh, and the, there is no further development on it. The author said, uh, I'm not going to do anything more on this. Go use KDN Live. <laughs> That's his recommendation. Um, Next, I tried Sinalera, which is a very big one. It's been around for a while. Uh, it'll use multiple CPUs for encoding, so it's, that was pretty nice. Uh, has great feature set titles. You can, you can do reverse movie clips in there and all this fun stuff, but it's real crashy. It's very unstable. It's hard to install, too, and uh, the, the interface is real hard to get used to. I think it, it's designed for dual monitors. And if you're on one monitor, it's all really cramped and, and hard to get around. Uh, but the crashiness of it is, is the big problem with it. Uh, Blender is a very cool program for 3D scenes and videos. Uh, it's very stable, and it has a lot of documents for doing the 3D stuff. It has a little built-in editor, and there are not a lot of documentation for that little editor. So if you just trying to use it to, to edit regular movies it's not very good for that. It uh, doesn't have any fun features. Uh, it's, it's very picky about imports. A lot of times you'll import it and, and your sound and your video won't sync up and you got to go back out and synchronize it through a script and all this stuff. Um, and it pretty much just exports AVI which is a very old format. Um, I think they expect you to do your 3D stuff in there export it and then use another editor to, to finish it off. PTV is a, it's been around a little while, but it hasn't gotten a lot of love until recently. It is the one that ships with Ubuntu now, the Ubuntu Blessed Editor. Uh, it is stable. It uses GStreamer backend for all the codec stuff. Um, and it's under development right now. GNOME and Ubuntu are really pushing features in this thing. But right now it's very featureless. Uh, I just call it a, a a crop and splice editor. I mean, there's there's no titles or transitions or all this good stuff. You, you can put a video in and chop it up or stick them together, <laughs> but that's about it. it. It's a good one to watch, though, because it, it may get very good. Uh, KDN Live is KDE's blessed editor, I think. Uh, it's the one that I ran into on there. Uh, I tried to run it under GNOME, and it was not very stable. I had a lot of trouble with it, so I, I sort of stopped trying to use that one. I did try to install KDE and use it in there, and I didn't have a lot, a lot of luck just because it, I don't know, KDE doesn't like me. It has a lot of good features, though, uh, and it uses what's called the MLT media framework instead of GStreamer. So that handles all of the encoding and that sort of stuff, which is, is pretty good. The 
interface was, was pretty messy, like most KDE interfaces are, in my opinion. So I finally came across OpenShot, which is stable, has decent docs, and there are a lot of screencasts. So if you want to do something, the odds are you're going to run into a screencast that will show you how to do it. It's very featureful. Got titles and credits and transitions and all the good stuff that you need. It's very Unixy. It does one thing and does it well, and if it wants to do something fancy, it goes out to an external program to do that. Uh, so for titles, you go out to Inkscape and make a nice title screen. Um, they're working on 3D titles, and they'll go out to Blender and you make your 3D title in Blender, and it, it integrates all that back in, but it doesn't force you to use it all in the one interface. It's written in Python and GTK, which makes it really awesome. And it also uses the MLT backend like KDN Live. The reason it is not shipped with Ubuntu is because it's big, for one, and also they are trying to use GStreamer for everything. So because it doesn't use GStreamer, it's not the blessed editor. Um, so now we're going to make a video using OpenShot. Uh, the parts of your video you usually have a bunch of source video files which you get off a camera or download off the internet or whatever. Um, I always turn those into MP4, MPEG4 videos. Just works well. Uh, so you usually have a title screen, maybe some sort of splash screen, uh, and then your main content and the credits. And we'll put all that together here. Here's your main editor window. First thing you do is make a new project. You can either use the plus or file new project. Give it a name. And then put it where you want it. You usually end up going to other because it, it gives you these default locations, but you don't usually put it there. Put it up. Stick it in here. Um, you can define a default project length. This is not a hard length. If you get it wrong, it's OK. Uh, but it's best to sort of guess at how long this thing's going to be. So I'll say, yeah, mine's going to be probably about four minutes. And what that does is, is size the default bar for you so you don't have a bunch of stuff on the end you're not going to use. It makes it easier to zoom in and out. And you do have to pick a project profile. This is pretty important. Um, the, the DVNTSC profile is a like standard television, 720 by 480, 30 frames a second. Um, another common one you'll run into now is uh, like HD 720p. There's a few versions of that. And then there's the 1080. 1080p is another common one now. There is 1080i also. Yeah, yeah you're right, 1080i. Save. So now we got our new project. Now you can either add clips with the plus or you can just drag and drop them right in there. So we'll drag and drop here. I've got my clips all ready to go. Um, so I've got that one. Here's my main content video here. Uh, picture. And then I got a I got a music file here. You can just drag those in too. You can drag pictures in too. I guess this is a, this is just a PNG. You can put those in if you got pictures. So they're all here ready to go. If you double click on the, on them over here, they'll start playing over there. And that makes sense with this one. Oh, that's my full video actually. Uh -oh. That'll be fun. I dragged the wrong one in there, I think. <laughs> uh, and once they're over here, you can scrub them, which means you can you can move back and forth really quickly by dragging this bar. So you can see what's in there. It doesn't play, but 
it doesn't play the sound as you're doing that, but you don't usually need to. Um, so when you're ready to use them, this is sort of my, my introductory screen that I put together. And we'll actually put one of those together if you want to, if we have time. You just drag it and you drop it down there. Now it's pretty small and that's because I'm zoomed out to 15 seconds, so each of these tick marks is a 15 second interval. A lot of times I'll zoom all the way in and you can get a good idea of the length there. Yeah, this is this is how you'd stick them together. Now, if I wanted to, let's let's put this one. Actually, let's pull this out for now. Oh, you got to right click and remove clip, and that just removes it out of the timeline. It doesn't remove it from your computer or anywhere else. It's still up here. Um, I'm actually going to pull this one in since I used the wrong one, and then I will cut out the parts that I didn't want on here yet. So I can just scrub along here till I get to the start. So let's say like right here. Let's say I want to remove all this front part. Come over to the razor tool, click that, and then I've got this and it, it'll cut wherever I tell it to. I like to go just close to the red. You click and that chops it in half. And come back over here. If you forget to come back over there and you start clicking, you'll, you'll start chopping things up in there. You can use Control Z or Undo to fix it. So to remove that part, right click, remove clip. So now I've tapped all that front part out of there, and it's back about where it should be. And I can just push that back up to the front edge, the left edge. And you can see now it's it, it's all gone. So. Um, so now I'll put my start back in there. It's best to go. Sometimes it's important to pay attention to which track is above the other. And you can add more tracks. It defaults to two. Um, it's for transitions, so let's say I want to transition from this first title here. So if I start doing that, we got this spugado, and then we're going to transition in. So how it, where it is now, it grabs track two as soon as it comes into play and switches over to that. But let's say we want to transition, we want to dissolve across here. You go up to transitions, and there's several of them in here. So you can get as, as weird as you want with some of these fractals. And I haven't used a lot of them. Usually I just use the dissolve if I'm going to use a transition. You just. You know, Yeah, I I think shatter. so. Like okay. shatter or something. I've seen videos. See, where there's like hatch. Oh. That was loud. Um, I don't see one where where it'll like take little pieces and fly.